Hello and welcome to the replay. If you are tired of sitting around and thinking about writing your book and not actually writing your book, you're in the right place because that's what we're talking about and I'm going to give you some motivation and inspiration to start writing. That sounds good. Tap some hearts. Did you know you can tap hearts on the replay and it's just as fun the second time around? It is. Alrighty guys. People are popping in. Hello, hello, Rogusio. I'm sorry, I totally did not say your name properly. Welcome, welcome. If you guys are new to this scope, if you've not seen me before, let me know who you are. Type on in the chat. Let me know your name, where you're coming in from, and I would love to say hi. Welcome, guys. So, is anyone else tired of just sitting around and thinking about writing your book? Because that can be a really frustrating experience. Who am I? I am Morgan Gist McDonald. I'm a writing coach, editor, and author. I work every day with authors, helping them to move from vague idea, chapter by chapter, into their first draft, and through the revision phase, all the way to a finished, publishable manuscript. Hello! Um, I can't, Amen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat and look at your profile. Hello, David Woody's in the house. Amen. I'm sorry if I said that not 100% correct, but welcome. I'm it. Thank you. Cool. So, you guys in the chat, is anyone writing a book? Is anyone thinking about writing a book? Let me know. I would love to talk to you. Jessica's here. Hey, hey. I know Jessica's writing a book. I'm very excited about your book. <laughs> so, guys, let's dig in. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you. As we're talking, if anything that we're talking about resonates with you, tap the screen to send those hearts up on the left or right side there. David, I hope you write another book. David has already written and published one book, which was fantastic, and I can't wait for you to put out another one. If you like what we're talking about, tap hearts on the screen. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> if you are not already following me, this may have just popped up on your feed from someone who shared it, make sure to hit the Perry buddy down there. Change the plus to a check and it'll let you know when I'm scoping. I scope regularly about writing and inspiration and step-by-step -step guidance. <laughs> I'm in the know, Jessica, that's right. <laughs> and all the scope notes, replays, and transcripts go up on paperravenbooks.com slash periscope. That is where I run my business in my blog, paperravenbooks.com. We... <laughs> Um, that's ready. We, uh, I coach writers and I have a team of some of the industry's best developmental editors, copy editors, and proofreaders who help turn your first draft into a publishable manuscript. Hello, Mr. Tishwan. Chuan. I said that really wrong, but thank you. Thank you for following. All right, Ms. I'm looking at profile picture. I'm like, that's definitely Ms. Ms. Tishwan, Tishwan, sorry, <laughs> Tishan, <laughs> thank you, Tishan, I got it. All right, let's dive in, Tishan, let's dive in, guys. So here is a problem that I see a lot in writers, okay? So when, pro when writers come to me, here's a really common thing they say. I've been thinking about writing this book for six years. <laughs> or coffee. I'm off caffeine. Did you know that? I'm doing much better now. It's been about two weeks. <laughs> um, they say, I've been writing a book for about six years. And I say, fantastic. How many words have you written? And they say, none. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let's talk about that. Why have we not written any words? Okay. Exactly, exactly. And usually then we start talking about, well, the, the scope of the book is really huge. I'm talking about, I mean, it could be any, whether we're talking about our own personal history or whether we're talking about the history of an academic discipline, the scope is huge. Thanks, Tishan, for inviting followers. Yes, if you know a writer friend who needs to stop thinking and start writing, share it out. <laughs> and thanks for those hearts, guys. Okay, so yes. The problem is that the scope of our book is probably big, whether it's our own personal history or, hey, an academic discipline or um, a self-help book or a book about your business topic. You're a writer. I like it. Do you write? <laughs> it feels huge and overwhelming. 
Deb, I have caught your scopes. You have fantastic scopes. Guys, Deb right there who just commented also scopes about editing, so you should follow her too. And so what we tend to think when we have these really large topics, yes, journalism, very overwhelming, is, oh, you're welcome, Deb. Okay, we tend to say to ourselves, well, I just need to think it through a little more. If I just, you know, I'm gonna sit in my chair, I'm gonna write a couple notes, and maybe I'll do a little mind map and some drawing, and I'm just gonna process and think and maybe do some more reading, some more research, and let it really sink in. Then I'll get really clear about what I'm writing. <laughs> no, you're fine, Tishon. And that doesn't really help most of the time. Okay, I will admit, so this is a bit of a controversial um, Periscope title, right? I'm telling you that you don't need to think anymore. You just need to write. I'm going to, I'm going to have a little caveat here. Yes, you need to think about your book topic. Like this is <laughs> clearly not your problem. Um, and Jen wants to wait until you have hours and hours to write. Oh, we got a scope topic there. Yes, you're going to do some thinking. Yes, you're going to do some researching. Yes, you're going to do a lot of reading about your topic. Yes, you're probably going to spend time sort of processing. That is a given. Like you're going to do that naturally. Where you're going to have problems is transitioning from that passive receiving, sink, um, steeping, simmering stage, moving into this action phase. That's where most people hit the wall. They're really good at receiving and really bad at output. <laughs> Tishon, I have kids. Oh my God, the th thought process interruption. I feel you. I've got three, ages five, three, and the little one just turned one today. I feel you. But um, where we tend to get stuck in our self-conversation is that we say, I just need some more time to think. The beautiful thing about writing <laughs> is that it actually helps you process. So the very act, <laughs> just research can't get enough. Yep, exactly. So the very act of writing through our thoughts helps us to process them. So here's something I would challenge you to do. If you are a research nut, like Jess and some other people in here, if you love, love, love the research, here's what I'm gonna challenge you to do. Fine, keep researching, I'm cool with that. Every time you read a portion of the book, so let's say, let's say every three chapters that you read in a book, you have to write a full page about it. Mandatory. <laughs> Go back to your student days. This is what you used to do as a student, right? If you were really intentional about processing the information for a class, you would read and then you would take notes. It doesn't have to be that serious. We're out of school now. Who cares? But <laughs> challenge accepted. Set a marker for yourself and say, okay, every 50 pages that I read, I'm going to write a one page even journal entry, hey, take the pressure off, that's fine. Write a one-page journal ent entry about your thoughts concerning those 50 pages. Here's what's happening when you're doing a lot of thinking. You are, it's like constant input into your brain, you're just like dumping information and experiences into your brain, and there's no output. Okay, there's no way for the information that's processing in there to actually get out. And so it's like it gets too full and there's a bottleneck coming out. Tishon, you're a Virgo, research everything. Yep, can't hold it in until you have to write. You have to unload immediately. Yes, and that's actually really good because the process, because if your brain gets really full of just information, it's almost like you're trying to remember so much. You're like, I know there's a lot of information in there. How do I get it out? You challenge yourself to keep the, keep the flow stable. So as much as is coming in has to also be going out at the same time. Exactly, Jess, the waters get murky, information overload. So anytime you feel that physical overwhelm, like, oh my gosh, here's my, here's my telltale. I start thinking to myself, I will never learn enough. When that phrase goes on repeat in my head, there's so much to know, I will never be able to learn enough. I can never have enough hours in the day to do all the reading that I need to do. You're welcome. That is my tell sign. That, as soon as that thought goes on repeating in my head, I say, okay, wait, stop. Because what has just happened is I have 
gotten out of balance. I'm taking too much information in and not outputting enough. So I stop what I'm doing, stop the reading, stop the research, stop the thinking, and I just, I, I challenge myself, I write for 25 minutes against a timer. Like I literally set a timer for 25 minutes and I'm like, I'm just gonna write out my overwhelm and overload. And that helps me clarify my ideas around the process and that, that emotion of overwhelm actually dissipates. And it helps me to think more clearly and more logically and rationally about whatever it is that I'm writing. So if you are in this place right now, <laughs> Jessica says, although in my defense, I do document my favorite passages of whatever I'm reading. It is not the same. It is not the same. <laughs> I'm gonna challenge you again here. It is not the same to pull out quotations and store them somewhere because, okay, I'll tell you, I worked with an author. This was like her MO. She would have just reams of research and then her writing process was try to just go and collect all of the quotes that she thought would be relevant to what she was writing and put all the quotes in a Word document. And then we would start working on, I was, I was coaching her through this and so then we would start trying to like work through all this. But there's nothing more debilitating and blocking than just an entire document of someone else's words. Miguel, it's okay if you didn't write for a few days. Everyone's allowed to be sick. It's okay. I was sick last week. I didn't hardly scope at all because I couldn't talk. It's fine to be sick. But when you're feeling better, get back into the writing. Okay. So she had a Word document full of other people's quotes. But she did not have any of her own writing in her own words. So can you imagine anything more debilitating? Like you're looking at five pages of just like quote, 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 quote. That's what I don't want you to do. <laughs> I want you to take a quote and write a page about it. Just free write it, just journal it out. Say, what does this quote mean to me? Why, does, why is it important? What do I have to say around this quote? So Jessica, if you have a tendency to just collect other people's quotes, that's totally fine, but don't just leave them in one long Word document. Take out a quote and write a little page about it. I get paranoid and think that everything <laughs> comes from someone else and not giving credit where credit is due. That's totally fine to keep a document with other people's quotes. But we're humans and like the human way of processing information is a very group process and we pull from other people and that's completely fine. List them in the references. <laughs> that's giving credit where credit is due. So that if a reader reads your book and loves what you're talking about, the reader can go directly to those references and they can find out who inspired you. So don't be paranoid about it. We're humans. That's how we sort of collect information in advance and well, hopefully we're advancing in our knowledge, our collective knowledge. Just stick them in the references. You're good. No one's going to sue you. Really think you're going to get sued? <laughs> no, you're not going to get sued. <laughs> They're not going to take your book off the shelves because you didn't cite properly. If that happened, we would have a lot fewer professors. Truth. <laughs> okay. So it's the principle. Yeah, no, I, I, I get it. You're trying to be really honest about it, but don't let that um, desire to be honest about credit stand in the way of you writing your book. Yeah. <laughs> so give that credit as much as you can, but just challenge yourself to keep writing. And it may be that your own words are just a twist off someone else's words, but they might connect with a reader in the way that the original words did not. I can't tell you how many times, like I, when I'm working with say an academic author and we're taking someone's original quote and I'm like, we have to rewrite this because this original quote, the idea is really great, but it means nothing. <laughs> the idea behind it is gold, but the words used to convey it are obscure and awful. Like if you rewrite this, you're doing the whole world a favor. <laughs> and that's a genuine original contribution. So don't downplay your ability to take someone else's obscure quotes or um, ideas and rework them and reword them in a way that's useful. That is a really valuable skill. So if you are in this place of overwhelm and you just want to keep thinking, 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 pause, stop what you're doing, set a timer for 25 minutes and write it out and challenge yourself to every like 50 pages that you're doing research, at least write a page or two or three about your own reflections and thoughts. 
and that will keep your book actually moving forward. Sound good? Okay guys, if you are in the process of writing a book, I'm doing a webinar in one hour and eight minutes. It's on the 12 easy steps to write a book that boosts your business and builds your platform. I'm walking you through all 12 steps that I walk through with authors when I'm coaching them one-on-one. -on -one. So I'm spilling the beans, 10-4, thank you Jess. Spilling the beans on my writing coaching process, all 12 steps laid out in a nice webinar. Go to paperravenbooks.com slash 12 steps webinar and join us there. Thank you guys so much. I hope that you are motivated to move past thinking and researching and reading and into writing action. Thanks all for hanging out and thanks for those hearts and all the lovely comments. Y'all have been fantastic. And y'all have a good day. I'll talk to you really soon. Bye.